Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Steve Jobs. It's a story about an intelligent and innovative man who is the creator of Apple Computers who had a 14 year gap between the launches of free computers. One is the Magnetage, two is the next computer, which is an independently owned by Jobs after he got fired from Apple. And free, when Jobs finally returned to Apple, he created the iMac G Free Computer. Now there have been free films about Steve Jobs. One was the 1999 TV movie that aired on TNT called The Pirates of the Silicon Valley, which is a story about two young two young college students who would soon become highly successful geniuses yep one was Bill Gates who will soon become the founder of Microsoft and two was Steve Jobs who will later become the creator of Apple that's right <laughs> and it was a hundred percent accurate definitely had everything that the story had to achieve because it makes sense it definitely shows exactly how the story began and had some solid acting from the two actors a lot of great characters that went into it it was perfect then there was the 2013 film with Ashton Kutcher from that 70s show to portray the role but that film was a totally forgotten movie I mean the story wasn't accurate enough and worse Kutcher was miscast I mean he did look like him but it just made him look like a complete asshole and that was really insulting however this movie was even worse because it was written by Aaron Sokin who gave us films like A Few Good Men The American President and even the underrated uh, Charlie Wilson's War but he also gave us TV shows like The West Wing which wasn't my cup of tea even though Martin Sheen was very good as the President of the United States. And The Newsroom, which aired on HBO, which stars Jeff Daniels, was also in this movie that I'm about to review. But I never saw that show, so I wouldn't care. But he went on to do probably the most overrated film of all time, The Social Network, which I didn't care for. I had a lot of problems with it. Mostly because Justin Timberlake is in it. And he's totally miscast. He's an asshole in the movie. He can't act for shit. Dakota Johnson's even worse. Because she later went on to do Fifty Shades of Shit. Even though it did star uh, Jesse Eisenberg, uh, Andrew Garfield, and Rooney Mara. Yeah. Which I know Garfield um, went on to do the film. The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, Jesse Eisenberg, of course, has already been doing a lot of stuff, including films like Adventureland and Zombieland. But Rooney Mara went on to to get her start on that terrible remake called A Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, I love the original film, but the remake was a piece of shit. But I thought she was good in that. But I thought she was good in and other films later on well except for Pan but okay you get the idea but uh, Social Network just didn't do it for me it didn't work it was just basically a love letter to uh, to Mark Zuckerberg who is indeed a big snob in real life I'm not a big fan of him just because I love Facebook and Twitter doesn't mean I'm going to actually love a founder who came up with the idea of social networking, but deep down in it, they act like a complete asshole. Uh, I mean, that's how I felt with MySpace, you know, when they had that one founder who started saying something stupid about one of my favorite actors who claims that he was dead. And I know, that, that really pissed me off. But I never did go to MySpace, and I don't even give a shit. But I'm not a big fan of Mark Zuckerberg, so 
Why do I care? However, I did love the film Moneyball. Yeah, with Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. I thought that was a better film than anything that Social Network had. But this movie to me just felt more like the Social Network 2.0. Because we're just going to get the same writing that he did in that film. Just with more arguments, more bitterness, more about Steve Jobs and his dark side of himself. Even though he was trying to launch free computers. And it just goes on and on and on and on. And yeah. Despite the fact that it did have good direction from Danny Boyle, the same director who gave us 28 Days Later, Train Spotting, Sunshine, Slumdog Millionaire, and of course 127 Hours. Yeah, I love those films, so I actually expected more from him. But anyway, let's get to the review. Stars Michael Fassbender, best known for his roles in Prometheus and the X-Men movies. Kate Winslet, the best known for her role in Titanic. And she later went on to do films like uh, Revolutionary Road. Seth Rogen, always been best known for a lot of works he's been in, such as uh, Superbad and and Pineapple Express and all these other comedies he's been in. Jeff Daniels you know, from Dumb and Dumber. Catherine Rodderston. Michael Studbog. Mackenzie Moss. Ripley Sobo. Sarah Snook. Adam Shapiro. John Ordis. And Stan Ralph. Written by Aaron Sulkin and directed by Danny Boyle. The movie begins set in Cupertino, California in 1984. We meet Apple co-founder Steve Jobs, who's played by Michael Fassbender, about the launch of a new user-friendly computer known as the Apple Magnetage 512K. Only one problem. The voice demo fails less than an hour before its unrevealing, so he offered engineer Andy Hertzfield to fix it for the presentation. Meanwhile, he rants to marketing executive Joanna Hoffman, who's played by Kate Winslet, about a Time Magazine article exposing his paternity dispute with ex-girlfriend Suzanne Brennan, only to find out that he might be the father of her five-year-old daughter named Lisa, which, as we know, Jobs would later use uh, his first daughter as a name for an Apple computer product. Anyway, she arrived with Lisa just to confront him despite of her bitterness over his denials. But then, Jaws' refusal to support her despite of his wealth wanted to bond with Lisa by creating a Mac Paint art for him in the computer. So then he agrees to provide more money and a house for them to live. After that, Apple co-founder Steve Rosenack, also known as The Waz, who's played by Seth Rogen, had asked Jobs to acknowledge the Apple II team in his presentation, which might be an unwise decision for him. But then, Apple CEO John Scully, who's played by Jeff Daniels, had discussed Jobs' life as simply as an adopted child, which, at this point, you know, they were just talking about yeah, what Jobs was doing. And even though they were, you know, criticizing the Super Bowl ad that uh, Scully had created, you know, where they just showed, like, basically, you know, a huge army that was going to happen in the futuristic world as we know it. Yeah, I know that famous uh, Super Bowl ad. Suddenly, the Magnetage had failed. And by 1988, Jobs had founded a new company known as Nex, which the Nex computer had a launch at the War Memorial Opera House. Before that, he spends time with Lisa, who had just turned nine years old, but his relationship with Brendan had still become very strained. 
by accusing her of irresponsible behavior of using Lisa to get money from him. But then Rosenak had arrived and predicted that the next will be another failure in the computer business. Anyway, Scully had the men's to know why the world believes that he fired Jaws was because he was forced out by the Apple board after he defended the Macintosh following its discontinuation. I mean, despite the warnings that Scully has done. But after that, Hoffman and Jobs discussed that Nexus unclear direction, designing the computer to entice Apple to buy the company, will reinstate him. Yeah, because they actually created the next computer by using the black cube and all that. So it was going to be a new PC launch, but that didn't work out. And by the time that happened, yeah, Jobs went on to come up with other bigger and better things because he went on to, to join Pixar and all that. But since Jobs no longer uh, owns Apple at the time, John Scully had continued to, as a CEO for Apple by launching a new an electronic writing pad that lets you change fonts, which unfortunately that didn't work out. And then later on, by 1998, he was fired. So then he purchased Next and names Jobs as the new CEO, which that means now he's finally back in the Apple team. So he's about to unreveal the iMac G3 computer at Davies Symphony Hall. But then he became so delighted with Hoffman's strong commercial forecast, became very furious to learn that Lisa has allowed her mother to sell the house that Jobs had bought for them. But Hoffman reminds Jobs that he has threatened to withhold Lisa's college tuition, which Hurd feels admit that he paid Lisa's tuition suggests that she needs to attend therapy. And that's what leads to that problem. Because Rosenack again had asked Jobs to credit the Apple II team during the presentation, which once again he refuses. So Scully had arrived to make two make amends at best of Hoffman by having Jobs to apologize to Lisa for his mistakes and then have Lisa come over because already she's now a college student and she's already had a, uh, a Walkman on her. So Jobs had to fix all the mistakes that he made in the past and try to reconnect with his family including his daughter and he finally went back on stage to introduce us to the iMac G3 computer and the film ends and it's such a beautiful scene now I'll give you this though it did have its good moments there I mean it actually did show how Jaws was trying to work so hard to fix all these mistakes that he made by trying to sell the Magnetage and the next computers even though they all failed to do so because unfortunately he wasn't listening to them and you know, Wozniak had warned him about that, but nevertheless, I mean, he went on to do bigger and better things. I mean, he finally went to Pixar, because he really enjoyed all the work that they did, because that's when they went on to do the film Toy Story. He came back just after um, Apple had fired you know, John Scully, because, you know, they were having a lot of problems at the time. They were already losing shares. But now they, they finally found a better solution by actually fixing everything after Apple had bought the next computers. And now he's back as CEO. So things just went to. So that's how Apple went uh, over the years. It now became a highly successful company. Because after the iMac G3 computers, we now had the eMac computer which I have already since 2004 and we also had the iPod, the iPads and the iPhones so yes and of course we had the Apple which of course they were all sell at the Apple store and we were getting the Apple store over the years in malls everywhere and that's how it remains but Steve Jobs would always be remembered as a brilliant intelligent man and very innovative and it's just sad that he's no longer with us due to his 
since his passing in 2011 uh, due to cancer. But performance-wise, I thought Michael Fassbender did a great job portraying the role exactly how Steve Jobs would have loved it. I mean, he got the boy still right, but unfortunately, he looks nothing like him, and that's where they should have fixed it there. Uh, Kate Rinslet, however, definitely deserves a fine performance as Joanna, yeah, the marketing executive. And she definitely portrayed it very well, I mean, given the fact that she, she adapted an American accent to play the role, even though there are times when I think she kind of changed some of the accents there. But, it, you know, it was definitely worth it, and I'm glad she did uh, fine with her role. Uh, as for um, Seth Rogen and Jeff Daniels, I thought they did fine. I mean, it's hard to believe that uh, Seth Rogen would actually play uh, S Steve Rosenack um, very well. You know, given the fact that he looks unrecognizable with all that long beard and glasses. So, yeah. So this was an interesting take. And Jeff Daniels uh, definitely nailed his role perfectly um, as uh, John Scully. I mean, he even looks like him at times. Well, there you go. Now, here's the bigger problem with the film. is the writing. I mean, once again, Aaron Sokin just keeps coming up with more of this, this mumble-jumbo of, of dialogue-driven um, story filled with lots of arguments, bickering, you know, everything about, you know, jobs, you know, being an asshole all the time. I mean, I know it shows the whole dark side of him by alienated people all around him like you know it, it's all these arguments between uh, Joanna his ex-girlfriend with his daughter uh, everything with uh, Steve Rosenack and, and then later John Scully it just seems to go on and on and on for two hours straight and to me it just really ruined the film for me you know because let's face it I mean you know, he's a great writer for Sokin, but once again, you know, he's just, he's just, oh, he just pretty much overridden the whole story. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, though, Sokin is a great writer for what he's given, but let's face it, he's overrated, and I think he's overridden the whole thing that just ruined the story for me. And, and that's just not fair. I think they deserve a lot better than that. However, I think the direction uh, by Danny Boyle did a great job, even though there are some problems with the pacing and the editing that went into it. Like, I know there are times when they tried to edit back and forth with every single flashback that it went into. Like, for instance, when uh, they started showing the conversation between Steve Jobs and John Scully, that seemed to go on. I mean, especially when you started hearing the, the, the loud, um, over dramatic score that they put into it. Like you know, you're gonna see the two sides of evil. I mean, man. I mean, that's exactly what I had to hear. Because we knew what was gonna happen between the two. Like, you know, you know, John Scully was gonna get some death threats and all that, and Jobs was, was already gonna lose his job and. God, you know what's, what was going to happen next. <laughs> yeah, that, that bothered me. And, and then... And then... Um, there were other scenes here that just... Just doesn't seem to work. But other than that, though... I don't know. I mean, I think the film would have been a whole lot better if they had done it... Uh, some justice to his story. Because most of the stuff just doesn't seem like... Uh, it was... Accurate, it was accurate enough. Yeah, I don't know, but hey, at least it's better than the last movie that Ashton Kutcher had done, where they really fuck everything up with the story. So, but I'll give him credit for what he did. But I'll give Sokin some credit for trying to get some of this. But I think he just maybe that's just the problem with him. I mean, he needs to come up with something better to fix the story. And the movie was a big flop at the box office. It landed at number seven. 
I uh, just didn't do so well as they hoped they were going to be. Yeah, mostly because they had a lot of movies that was coming out during October and they all became a huge success. So I guess you know, people weren't really interested in watching another Steve Jobs film. Sad to say, I can't recommend this movie, but if you want to see a better film about Steve Jobs, definitely check out Pirates of the Silicon Valley because I think they told it straight. It was perfect. I mean, even though they're just mostly focusing on his younger years and, and how it all began and everything, because I think it's a whole lot better than this. I mean, we didn't really need a Steve Jobs film, to be honest, unless we end up getting a documentary like we did with uh, the one that aired on Netflix you know, before we had this film. But if they wanted to make a, a better biography, you know, just right, I mean, they had to come up with something better, so maybe they'll definitely do justice with his character. I mean, despite of what he acts. Anyway. But, if you love the film, then be my guest. So anyway, I give Steve Jobs two and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.